Alrighty. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here. Back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Let's finish this game. But, you know, not tonight, because it's going to be long. Final chapter. The Resolve of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. It starts off immediately in a trial. So maybe, whoa. Kirby, thank you for the 30, 32 month sub. How was Disney? It was hot. Also, like, I tried to go on rides that I haven't gone on, like, the last couple of times I've been there. So I rode, um, I mean, obviously the first road I, ride I rode um, was Rise of the Resistance, the, the newer Star Wars ride. And then we rode Autopia, which is a car driving one on a track. Um, Nemo submarine something which was a little bit too claustrophobic because you were inside a tiny submarine. And then um, Pirates of the Caribbean, which had two drops that um, I didn't know was there, so it freaked me out. It was hot, that's what she said. The first ride I rode. Still no need to go to Disneyland someday? You should go. Go and definitely ride Rise of the Resistance and Millennium Falcon, the two Star Wars rides. And then after that, you could ride whatever you want. But if you like coasters, I would ride um, Space Mountain. And I next time I go to Disneyland, I want to ride the the bobsleds on the Matterhorn, and then the and then the train mounted one, because those are like the other two coasters, like coaster coasters. There, it'll be the first person I contact for suggestions if I go. Eat a turkey leg. Are so good. Ah, so the time's finally come. Today we unravel everything. I'll be counting on your support for more than ever today, Mr. Sato. Um, Mr. Sato. Ah, why did she flip me? Oh no! What's the matter, Mr. Naruhodo? Um, nothing. I was just saying that I'll be relying on your support today, but. So sorry, of course. I know I can be rather incompetent at times, but... I shan't let you down. Also need to meet up someday. We do, we should, dude. Would you mind helping me to my feet then? Oh dear, I'm really very sorry. This is the sun isn't her usual self at all. But that's hardly surprising, I suppose. She just found out that her father is the partner of a world-famous detective, not to mention... Ah! Good morning, sir! Lord Van Zeeks. Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. What? Did I hear that correctly? What? Oh, um, no, nothing. Just, I hope we can clear things up today. I really can't make this man out. His face says I hate you, but his words are almost jovial today. <laughs> Kitty! In fact, he hasn't been very Reaper-like at all since this all began yesterday. Did you get any glasses? They look very nice on you today. Oh, that- thank you for reminding me. I actually have to wipe these down. They got a bit, um... Uh, dirty because I worked out today. Oh, I really- I don't- Remember if I mentioned this last time on stream, but I haven't been working out my arms at all. They're super weak. So now I have to like start working out my arms again. I'm trying to get to do like a hundred burpees a day, but I max out at 35 and then I'm so tired and I'm like, oh, I can't do anymore. But I really want to push myself to do 100 burpees a day. But I can't jump in my apartment. So instead of um, doing the last jump up, I've been doing like a set of mountain climbers after um, push up going down. Oh, it's hard. I was memeing not about looking nice, but about your glasses. <laughs> no, I know you always say my glasses look new, but my glasses were dirty. I just forgot to clean it before our stream. Ah. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks isn't a Reaper, Mr. Naruhodo. Good point. 
I'm very dirty, what I heard. I am dirty. I'm a stinky, dirty person. <laughs> the Reaper. I suppose in hindsight, I shouldn't have allowed that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? If it was my tacit acceptance of that pseudonym. My failure to stop the Reaper becoming something more than a mere legend that led to all this. But you're not to blame for that, Lord Van Zeeks. It's only because serious crime in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? To be frank, I'm not sure that was the sole reason. What do you mean? There was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. But having been slain by that evil killer, Clint's restless spirits returned as some sort of demigod. To wield a deadly blade of justice where I, by dint of the law, could not. Yes, we've heard that story too. There, now there's just a glare in my glasses. Oof. Worth that a hair. Nah, it's a glare. Whatever. When I lost him. I felt as though I'd lost my guiding light. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so, in some small way, I wonder if perhaps those rumors made me feel his absence a little less keenly. Even if I knew it was just an illusion, just some nonsense conjured up by an over-imaginative public. It was obviously extremely important to you. We're Clint Van Zeeks. Well, what's important now is uncovering the truth. That's all that matters. I know that you didn't take anyone's life. And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. I never thought I'd say this. But I can see it in your eyes. That burning desire to cut through all lies and deception. I can't deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of absolute integrity. Thank you. Now tell me. Why do I detect the scent of expensive tea leaves in the air? Oh, Iris, when did you get here? Oh. Ah, oh, um... I brought you one of my special blends. Pelly loves it. He says it helps him to clear his head. How long do you think this trial is gonna be? Because I'm imagining that we can't do any more investigation stuff. Right? I think this is just it. I thank you. Oh, hee <laughs> hee. That's surely the first and last time I'll ever see a sight like this. You seem different today, Iris. Uh huh? Sort of subdued, I suppose. I am not. What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on her mind a lot. She's clearly very troubled about having stolen that autopsy report from Dr. Side's laboratory. All right then. Good luck to you both. I have to make a move now. Oh, you're not staying? I thought you'd want to watch today's proceedings. Well, I'd like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to get ready. Get ready? For what? Oh, yes. Would you take this? Isn't that one of the little felt dolls that's usually dangling from your knapsack? Yes, it's a lucky charm. A little hurley that I made once. A hurley? It looks- Ah! It looks more like a hairly to me. Ha 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 ha. Oh, kitty. Yeah, I really need to do a drawing stream soon. Uh, I need to make new emotes. I need to make new template for Nirvana Initiative. Uh, I can't wait to play it. I haven't been spoiled by anything yet for um, Nirvana Initiative. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. What? Pull his ears? That's right. As a way to bring good luck, I think you might need it. Iris's lucky charms has been entered into the court record. Did you ever draw your avatar that yet? No, I've been waiting to do an art stream for it, so... Maybe this weekend? We'll see. I have so much freaking evidence! What a charming little rabbity version of Mr. Sholmes. Do you suppose this is how Iris sees him? Are you alright, Mr. Nadahodo? Your eyes are veritably boring into the poor doll's ears. Oh, sorry. I was just wondering. What do you suppose would happen if I were to tug its ears with all my might right now? 
I'm sure that we'll find out when the time is right. To become a proper gentleman, you must really learn stoic patience. But I want to know... Man, there's nothing up his... <laughs> there's no panty shot. Okay. Are you gonna draw Ryuki or Mizuki? Mizuki! Guten Tag. Guten Abend, Golden. How you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy... What day is it today? <laughs> it feels like Monday to me. It's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. I got my eyes after the laser today. <gasps> Did you get like LASIK surgery or something? Or like, um, some kind of eye surgery? Dang, how did that feel? How do you feel now? Does your eye still feel weird? No, sir, you just have to get stuff cleared out. Ah! Ooh. Well, I hope you don't have long-lasting side effects or funny feelings in your eyes, man. Ooh. I just sneaked a peek inside the courtroom. And it seemed very different to normal. Yes, it would seem. But a certain someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What does that mean? What about Mr. Sholmes, Iris? I don't know. He was out all night and he hadn't come home by the time I left this morning. Oh, I see. Was Professor Mikotoba out all night too, do you think, Mr. Sato? Yes, it would seem so. I telegrammed the hotel this morning. And apparently they didn't come back to their rooms last night at all. They? Father and Judge Jigoku, I mean. Judge Jigoku too? That's right. Nobody appears to have seen either of them since yesterday. Counsel for the defense and the defendant. Court is about to be in session. <coughs> Please make your way inside the courtroom at once. No pain or anything, just felt weird for a few minutes after it happened. Anyways, how was you? I am good. I've just ate a lot of food this weekend. And now I need to burn off all the calories to... I. My goal is to go down to pre-COVID weight, and that would be like 127, 128. But man, I've been having trouble going lower than 135. Uh, but right now I'm I like gained too much weight, so I need to I need to go down a lot higher. Time to finish this Nami Tosi Tos. Buffet? No, I just ate a lot of carbs. Like Friday night I had a whole thing of pho. Saturday I had um a foot long banh mi and chicken and biscuits for dinner. And then Sunday Sunday I forgot what I ate, but I ate, like, rice and macaroni. And then Monday, I had, like, a bunch of sweet drinks and, um... And more bread and macaroni and cheese and turkey leg because I was at Disneyland on Monday. Are you for real? I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, are you for... I am for real. Never meant to be... But yeah, I... I just... Um, overloaded on carbs. I need to burn it all off. I want to lose... I want to lose 13 pounds. Good luck, Danruno. Good luck, Susie. Yes, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper. I hope it goes well. Once again, I have to thank... I thank you for the delicious tea. It was very soothing. Oh, I'm so glad. We must go inside now, Lord Van Zeeks. Hmm. But you're already skinny toast. I need to lose weight. But this is the heaviest I've ever been in my life. I really want to go down to, like, pre-COVID weight. I guess, like, growing up, I've always been on the lighter side. And so people always, like, heard, when they heard how much I weighed, they were like, Whoa, that's it? You're too skinny, because I would always wear baggy clothes, so they didn't really see just how thin I was. Uh, but now my face is like a circle. Look at that. Ugh. Uh, also, this is the best week of the year, Shark Week. It's Shark Week? Oh, it's- wow. It's July. Can you take some of my fat, please? Thanks. Ew, no! I have to get rid of all my fat, are you kidding me? Lord Fanzeeks, 
has always been the formidable prosecutor I've had to lock horns with in court. But not today. Today I battle with another in pursuit of the truth. My best friend, Kazuma Asogi, who I trust more than anyone else in the world. We are living our lives. Now I understand what it was that drew me here to Britain all those months ago. Now I know exactly what destiny had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this one day, to this one trial, to this one final reckoning. I don't think we could have been prepared for this trial no matter what. But okay. Sharp weekend, I love it. I'm a sharp assessed freak. Y yeah, you know the two things that... Well, there's no one here. It's very quiet. Um, the two things that I feel like we were all afraid of as kids that weren't as big of a deal when we were adults are sharks and quicksand. Like, every time people go to the beach, they're just like, Oh my gosh, watch out for sharks! I'm like, would sharks really come this close to the beach in New York? I don't think so. It feels even more oppressive here than it did yesterday. Their cold stare is piercing me like knives from all sides today. Ah! Mr. Nadawodo, look! Hey! Lord Strongheart's? Kazuma must have known beforehand. The ramifications of the trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. In fact, events have come to light that, th uh, that threaten to rock the very foundations of our country's legal system. The escape of a condemned criminal on the night of his execution, the subsequent unlawful shooting of the man, and the revelation that prison staff must have been complicit in the jailbreak. Britain is currently hosting influential members of the judiciary from countries all around the world. It's imperative that we uncover the truth in these proceedings to avoid international embarrassment. By royal decree, this will continue to be a closed trial. And one over which I, male Strongheart, exercise total and unequivocal authority. No, 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 this is not gonna be good because he's gonna- No, I- He's just gonna skew things in his favor. This is- He has bias. He, he's not allowed to do this. As a kid, I feared spiders and vampires. I've never been afraid of sharks. Quite the opposite. You joke, but almost every beach around me is closed because of shark attacks. Really? Sharks that far north? That's crazy. But yeah, I mean, as an adult, I'm still afraid of spiders. Like, if I see one in the wild, it's like, okay, you do you. Don't bother me. But if you're inside my house, like, I will be afraid of you and I will try to kill you. Vampires? I don't think I was ever scared of vampires or... Ghosts, really. It's just like, oh man, I'm afraid of the thought that something is there that I don't know about, but not necessarily like monsters and creatures. So, no jury. The the six jurors flames just... As was the case in yesterday's proceedings, those here present at the public gallery. Our distinguished members of our judiciary assembled to bear witness to a fair judicial process. It's not gonna be fair at all. In other words, a collection of your acolytes, Lord Strongheart. Oh, sick burn! On a personal note, I found this most distressing, Lord Van Zeeks. You were a prosecutor of exceptional talent. Much like your brother Clint, in fact. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. For the trial of Barak Van Zeeks, who officially stands accused of murder. Counselors for the prosecution and defense, are you in full readiness to proceed? The defense is ready, my lord. As is the prosecution. Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. There was a side to the victim, Inspector Tobias Gregson, that was unknown to his superiors at Scotland Yard. Yes, he was carrying out operations in secret, which Scotland Yard knew nothing about. And in those clandestine operations, he had an accomplice. Mr. Daly Vigil, who would be given the inspector's identification, and pre present himself around the capital in order to establish credible alibis for Gregson. In that way, Gregson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work when, in fact, he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's session, Mr. Vigil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. It would appear he buried his memories of the time deep inside himself as a means of self-preservation. Because whilst he was engaged as a chief warder at Barclay Prison, he abetted the convict's escape. 
Ah, skip that too fast. True story, one time in one of my college classes, I felt a spider crawling up my leg in my jeans. It took every bit of willpower not to scream like a little girl. Yo, I would have screamed. Scary things are scary, man. That is creepy. No, thank you. Uh, yeah. Mr. Visual is currently recuperating at St. Sinners. He's recovered enough to give a signed statement about his movements on the day prior to the incident. He's formally admitted to posing as Gregson whilst investigating the Red-Headed League. Which brings us to this crucial issue of the victim's time of death. The defense yesterday proposed a suggestion that the victim may not have been killed one day earlier. This was based largely on the discovery that the victim's pocket watch had not been wound. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. Really? Go ahead, pr 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 Prosecutor Asagi. I met once again with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. She confirmed that the defense's suggestion could not be ruled out. It's entirely possible that Inspector Gregson was killed on 31st October, the day before his body was discovered. I have here an updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. But the official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday. At the time of death was 5 p.m. on 1st November. You shut your mouth? You're trying to cover your tracks? I will get it out of you. There are indications of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however. It seems that the natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. That's out of the question. There are no refrigerated devices in that part of London large enough to accommodate a human corpse. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. There's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Very well. The court will accept the new report as evidence. However, if this updated report is deemed to be accurate, it will give renewed significance to the movements of the victim on the day before the Fresno Street incident. It would, yes, especially since on that day. Inspector Gregson was using Mr. Vigil to cover up his real movements. It's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. Do I sense that the prosecution has some information regarding these activities? Scotland Yard put an enormous effort into investigating that precise matter yesterday. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigation work. So the prosecution calls its first witness now. I will get it out of you, that's what she said. Ah, ah, ah. State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Gina Lestrade reporting representative of Scotland Yard. A self-conferred rank, but never mind. Gina, again? What's your problem, Odo? What's with that Gina again look, eh? Ah, uh -uh. The boss meant the world to me. He done more for me than anyone else ever did. Oh? Inspector Gregson, you mean? He got me out back of, out the back slums of the East End and took me under his wing. Taught me that light can have a purpose. That's why I'm the best person to be standing here speaking for him. Oh, Gina. Right. All out of the goodness of Gregson's heart. Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Sholmes. No. What's relevant to these proceedings is that the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations yesterday has revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. That face. Lord Strongheart knew! Of course he does! He's the mastermind behind all this! So, Inspector Lestrade, let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Come on right up, sir. Uh, this testimony, the victim's movements. All yard detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. But a little search on the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a load of secret meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled good dealings that day. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't on to it yet. What matters most is, there's witnesses what saw the Reaper at the place too. Hmm? Smuggled goods? I don't know, do I? I'm just telling you what was written in the book. Tobacco, tea, spices, medicines. Goods of all sorts flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. It's well known that they're disposed of at regular black markets that take place in the capital. But the police are rarely able to locate them in time. So Inspector Gregson was investigating one of those black markets? It's been suggested that high-ranking government officials may be involved in black markets activity. Like you! 
No doubt Gregson was trying to avoid the deta details of his investigations being leaked to the involved parties. That would explain why he was operating on his own authority without the Yard's knowledge. Or you were making him do shady stuff! Just remember, I was also one of those weird kids who wasn't afraid of the dark. Yeah, like... A lot of kids, when they're younger, they're like, Oh, I'm scared of the dark, I need a night light, I can't sleep alone. But I remember when I was in first grade and I moved into um, our new house and I got my own room, I was just like, okay, good night. Went to sleep, no problem. I mean, I had a nightlight because it was cute, but I didn't really need it. And do we know where the dealings were taking place at t uh, this time? In a particular room of a certain exclusive London gentleman's club. <gasps> a gentleman's club. And on the day in question, the accused is known to have been there. That's the conclusion of Scotland Yard's investigation into the matter. That can't be. We haven't heard anything about any of this. Members of the club have testified to it. There's no question. The accused, Barrack Van Zeeks, was present. That would be very significant testimony then. Oh my. But, but... Lord Van Zeeks has made no mention of this at all. In short... Lord Van Zeeks had ample opportunity to murder the victim. Very well then, counsel for the defense, begin your cross-examination. I had a lava lamp I kept on at night, but uh, just because it looked cool. Yeah, right? Like, lamps look cool, but I don't need them on. A gentleman's club, Jelly would like that, wouldn't she? If it was just a club full of dudes? Maybe, possibly. Dutch and Woods Club, fancy way of saying hot naked girls joint. <laughs> well, back in the day, in London, they actually had like... It was legit just a place for dudes. Like, women weren't allowed. Sexist! Uh, investigate and do what we're told. Little search in the... Blah, blah, blah. So you went through Inspector Gregson's things? Yep, as a part of the independent Lestrade investigation. I'm sure your superiors would be delighted uh, that you're taking the initiative. I was stuck into his office when no one else was about. Because if anyone at the yard had seen me going in there, they'd have turfed me straight out on the street. This is sounding less and less like an investigation and more and more like something else. The prosecution understands that it was, ve it was this very detective who discovered the notebook. You got that right. Nothing gets packed and straight and Inspector Lestrade and her trusty assistant, Chief Inspector Toby. He found it hidden in one, in one of his desk drawers that had a false bottom. That's impressive. But then I went to eye myself where no one could find me so I could have a butcher's at what was written in it. So if anyone at the yard had found me out, they'd have turned me straight out on the street. Ah. <sighs> I've given it in now though, ain't I? And if it weren't for me, it would have never been found. Wait, do I have it in my... In my... No, I don't have it in my evidence. Okay. Oh, good dealings. Can't tell what that thing is that's hanging off your drink. Oh! Um... It's a cap. It closes it for the straw and then you just open it. But I just leave it open. Do you have any idea where those dealings were taking place? Yep. It was all there in the boss's notes. Let's see if I can remember. Um... As I already said, the illegal dealings were due to take place at a gentleman's club. Yes, I remember, but I was have to, hoping to find out the name of the club. That won't be necessary. What? It's conceivable that the club might be used again by the smugglers in the future. Therefore, the prosecution has been asked not to reveal the name in these proceedings. I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's right here. All I gotta do is read it out. And I could too. I've got this reading game buttoned up now. Can't I show you what I can do? Go on, what's the arm? The judge hasn't signaled his objection yet. I could try to find out. What should I do? Uh, 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 do I still have the... I'm gonna press. Yeah, I'm gonna insist. This is a closed court. The proceedings are confidential. There shouldn't be any possibility of the information being leaked. 
As I explained, there is some possibility of politicians being involved in this affair. The prosecution is rightfully exercising caution, I imagine. Well, if the word does get out, then you know whoever's in the gallery is leaking it, so you know to go after them. Duh. Stupid. No, my lord. The prosecution has no objection. Kasuma? There's no question that Inspector Gregson was looking into these black market dealings. However, it's not yet been established that he was on that particular trail on the day in question. If the defense requires to know the club's name, the prosecution has no intention of being obstructive. Oh, so he's like, the prosecution's not allowed to tell the name, but if you want to know, you can find out. Right then. I get to show off my reading skills. Apparently, the smuggled goods deal is going to happen at some gentleman club called the Grouse. Pet the cat. Pet, 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 pet. The Grouse? What sort of a club is that? I ain't got the foggiest. Clubs ain't exactly my thing. But... I am kind of curious. They're not places where a foreign student like you would readily be, be readily admitted. Have you looked into the mirror recently? I'll tell you what, me and Chief Inspector Toby could go in undercover. Could you though? I could pick out a few good marks and see what, I could, see what else I could find out while I was in there. I really don't think you should go picking out anything. Anyway, that's where these black market dealings were going to take place, is it? Yeah, it's gotta be. That's what the lower-ranking detectives at the yard reckon. Says the even lower-ranking detective. Looks like it's a big job in but coppers weren't in on it yet. Um, do I have anything called the grouse? Um, pistol notice, game photograph, red hair piece, revolver police, candelabrum, Gregson's photograph, autopsy report. Measure disguise of uh, time of death. Time scene, floor plan, notice board, Venus driver, photograph of the victim, pocket watch, vector's identification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we opened this last time. Just want to see if there's anything related to the grouse. Insignia, number, this really is Gregson. It's okay. Asuki papers. Okay, that's just that. Jackson's trunk. Open up. Let's have a look inside. Uh, something inside. Let's see, passport. That was 31st of October. Jackson went to France. Oh, there's a piece of a blade. Looks like a fragment of metal, but it's wedging so tightly I can't remove it. Well, don't cut yourself. You'd better leave it, I think. Okay, yeah, because last time we just examined this gash. Yeah, and they're like, whoa. See this huge gash across the side of the trunk, gone right through the letter into the metal behind. The metal chest have been so badly damaged. Whoever made the gash must have struck the side of the trunk with kind of a little force. For how it happens. And the blood, yeah. Passport. Uh, ACD0522, date of departure. Okay, um. Quince autopsy report. 31st, maybe between 9 p.m. and midnight. Uh, oh, yeah, because this one's like, oh, he had ink on his fingers and, um. Okay. Let's make it up around the hand. Trustworthy. Yeah, and this is the Blackbird line. Team shit. SS Grouse First Class Cabin? But. Yokohama departure, love at summer, London arrival, first no first November! Wait! Then what? I think it's called Dunkirk. Uh, SS Burya. Um, I could have gone, you like this on purpose. 
Okay, I thought it was just a blackbird line, but... It's the SS Grouse. But... The SS Grouse... Arrived... First... Am I just, like... Grasping at straws here? Um... Coffers weren't in on it yet. What matters most? Witness saw the Reapers at the place, too. Called the Grouse. I'm gonna see? Or, or maybe I should push the other statements. Okay, to be safe, I'm gonna push the other statements. Uh, press. How would Inspector Gresson come to find out about it in that case? That's the question, ain't it? But I'm just an apprentice, so... And why didn't he inform Scotland Yard of his findings? Yeah, that's what I was asking myself. Cause, you know, I'm just an apprentice. When it suits you, yes. Anyway, the point is, something went on at that club, no question. You can't say that for certain though, surely. Oh yeah, I should actually press this because they say they saw a barrack there too. Lord Van Zeeks was at the club? He was. Detectives who visited the club yesterday to make inquiries have confirmed it. Several members report having seen the accused being admitted to the room in question as a guest. It looks like there's no disputing that he was there then. Well, we know that Lord Van Zeeks was investigating Inspector Gregson, don't we? Perhaps he'd already discovered the Inspector's secret notebook. Which led him to the club, you mean? Maybe. Presumably, then, there are also eyewitnesses who can testify that Gregson was there. None have been identified at this time, no. So the all-important victim wasn't seen at this mysterious club. Oi! Why aren't you asking Inspector Lestrade, eh? So that's all I've got to work with. Gina's not holding back with that ice-cold stare of hers, is she? I really don't know what to make of all this. Lord Van Zeeks told us that he was investigating Inspector Gregson, but he never once mentioned that he met the inspector the day before the incident. You don't think Lord Van Zeeks could have been lying to us, do you? That's not the only way to explain this. Oh, if everything Lord Van Zeeks has told us is true, then there must be a mistake in this testimony somewhere. You mean, there are details we've yet to uncover? Exactly. A clue, perhaps, that even Gina hasn't noticed. That's what we should be looking for here. All yard detectives- okay, let's press this. So, you follow orders, do you, Gina? Nah, not me. I'm above all that, see? Oh. The boss always adds special orders for me. Grab us some fish and chips, or go and give Toby his grub. That kind of thing. So errands more than orders, then. This detective is still an apprentice, after all. Yeah, well, this apprentice ain't one to sit and wire and wait to be told what to do, even by the boss. That's why I've been doing my own investigations into what happened. I didn't find much at first. Yo, yo, Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Wednesday! Okay, um, so the only thing that really links stuff together is the Grouse ship. So I'm gonna present this. <gasps> For real! I've read about these clubs, uh... I've read about these clubs that exist here in Britain. As I understand it, they're places where well-to-do gentlemen socialize with friends and colleagues. Don't imagine for a second that a foreign student like you would be admitted. Seriously, is your mirror cracked or something? Do we know for sure that the contraband dealings were definitely happening at, at a club called the Grouse? The police are currently looking for evidence, but haven't found anything definitive yet. And I'm sorry to say that they probably won't. What do you mean by that? I mean that the place Inspector Gregson was secretly going to visit on 31st October may not have been a gentleman's club at all. It's showing a very irreverent attitude towards our country's police force there, Council. If it wasn't a gentleman's club, then what was it? A steamship. You think it's a ship? I have the evidence to prove it here. Let me see that. You don't get to see anything! You're just presiding! Yo, you're super shady. Larry. This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Ah, uh, the other side, my lord. Be more specific next time. Ah, this would appear to be the ticket for a passage upon a steamship, yes. The SS Grouse.
So there's a steamship named the Grouse that happens to share a name with the club. But I'm afraid to say, there's a flaw in your logic there. How? Look at the ticket. Notice the date of arrival in port. Yeah, see, this is why I'm like, this really... This ticket doesn't really have anything to do with, with the investigation because it arrived the day of the murder. The ship arrived at the port of Dover on the 1st of November. Ah. Oh. The day on which the sound like a gunshot was heard on Fresno Street. In other words, on the day in question here, 31st October, when the victim was on his clandestine mission. That ship hadn't yet docked on British shores. That would certainly make an undercover investigation somewhat challenging. The fact that the steamship hadn't re yet reached Britain substantiate the defense's assertion that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on the day in question. How? Then show your evidence for that assertion. Very well. I have evidence! In that case, counsel for the defense, present your evidence to the court now. Evidence that substantiates your claim that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on 31st October. I mean, the only thing I have is... Passport? What's this? A passport for travel issued to the victim. Dated 31st October. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that just one day before the inspector's body was discovered. There's a distinct possibility he wasn't even in the country. Then where could he have gone? Order! This document is for passage to France. It does appear to have been officially authorized. The day before the SS Grouse arrived at Dover, it docked on the northern coast of France for a night. According to my father, who was on board, at the port of Dunkirk. Dunkirk, France. What could possibly have taken the victim there? Ha 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 ha. I'm impressed, you Nuske Nadhodo. I certainly didn't expect you to get your hands on that passport. What? You mean, you knew about this? The prosecution strategy for this trial had been laid down by the Crown Prosecution Office. On the day before the incident, the victim was investigating contraband dealings at a London club. That's the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations and the line the prosecution has been asked to follow. But personally, I don't agree. I think the prosecutor's office is trying to hide something. What? And now that you've expertly disproven their assertion, I intend to reveal what I believe that something to be. What are you playing at, Pro Prosecutor Asogi? A courtroom is a forum for the truth, my lord. Which is why it's my duty to present all the facts, without exception. Let me guess. This was your intention from the outset, wasn't it? The reason Inspector Gregson secretly made his way to the steamship docked in France on the day in question was to carry out a mission for the Reaper. The Reaper? Who was he going to kill? Who was in France? Order! What on earth are you saying, counsel? The prosecution made an assertion in court yesterday. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine, by the Reaper's hand. But in reality, the truth is the opposite of that. What? Inspector Gregson wasn't investigating the Reaper at all. He was, in fact, acting for the Reaper. So, you're saying the mission he was undertaking was... Obviously, an assassination. Barak Van Ziegs never carried out any of the actual killings. Whenever the Reaper's victims lost their lives, he always had a cast iron alibi. Which tells us that he must have had an accomplice. And you claim that was Inspector Gregson. Hold it. Well, what the hell do you think you're saying, eh? My boss would never have done nothing like that. And yet, when you consider all the facts, it all makes perfect sense. No, it, it can't be. We also arrived at the same conclusion, didn't we? And Inspector Gresson was operating as the Reaper. Even so, there's no way that the person giving him his orders was Lord Van Zeeks. No, the true Reaper is somebody else. Barak Van Zeeks is not the Reaper. A predictable response from someone who's advocating for the man. Oh wait, can you guys hear the button clicking for my controller? Wait. I didn't read what he said! 
And even if it's true that Gregson was operating as an agent of the Reaper... Okay, um... Shoot, I changed the noise gate. Um, uh, filter. Before I started streaming, which I shouldn't have. I should have just left alone. Okay. Ooh. The suggestion that he went aboard the SS Grouse on an assassination mission doesn't follow at all. Oh? You have some solid reason for doubting the, doubting the assertion, do you, Council? Absolutely. It's very simple. On the day in question, nobody was killed aboard that steamship. Hmm. Professor Mikotopa and Judge Jikoku were on that very ship. If someone had been assassinated, I'm certain we would have heard, her, heard about it. <laughs> What's so funny? You're right, of course. No suspicious deaths were reported on board the ship. But I think perhaps you've missed a point. That's precisely why Inspector Gregson himself lost his life. Because he failed to assassinate the target, so... So they had to kill him. What? Gregson did board the SS Grouse that night with the intention of dispatching his mark. But his mission ended in failure. Failure? It seems that the defense hasn't yet grasped a very important detail here. What are you talking about? What detail? Inspector Gina Lestrade. Eh? What? The victim's notebook that you read an excerpt from earlier. That doesn't contain details of the secret investigations at all. It describes 10 years of assassination plots to be carried out by the Reaper of the Bailey. <gasps> You're lying! Even if all them bludgers woke got taken out and had a coming. The boss weren't the Reaper. Poor Gina. There's no question that Tobias Gregson was heavily involved in the Reaper's activities. You may just be an apprentice, but if you spent any time at Scotland Yard, you must have had heard rumors. I ain't heard nothing, and I don't believe a word of it. Then testify again, as a representative of Scotland Yard. Consider it your chance to defend your boss. I... I don't... I concur. The witness will give a new formal testimony. Of what? Mr. Stard, you will tell us to call everything you know about Inspector Gregson's secret notebook. Why doesn't she just give us the notebook for evidence and we could look through it ourselves? What the heck? This was a huge waste of time. The Reaper's notebook. Yeah, this notebook does have a load of stuff of what the Reaper got up to these past 10 years. Names of victims, dates and places and stuff. And the last entry was in there was 31st October. It said Grouse for the place on that date and then the name on the mark. It was an- uh, 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 There was a note about him being a criminal who got away from the Reaper in court 10 years ago or something. But honest, the boss didn't do none of it. He was, he was just investigating the Reaper, that's all. Hey, Chicken Tuna, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Hope you've been well, dude. Happy Wednesday. Keep personal opinion out of your testimony, witness. We require only established fact here. This must be so hard for her. You can't deny it now, surely. Rinosuke Naruhodo. What can't I deny? The notebook contained the name of the final mark and the location where the assassination would take place. That's information that the victim could have only known if he was working with the Reaper. Ah. Yeah, so give us the notebook, and we can read the name. So, who was to be this final mark? Go ahead, Inspector Lestrade. Read the name for the court. The name that's written alongside the entry that mentions the Grouse on 31st October. Eh? Oh, um... How do you read this, then? Reading's still not her strong suit. That ain't the problem, alright, Odo? It's a funny name. It ain't English. It's hard to read. So it's someone from overseas. Let me have a bash at it. Se ish iro is it? Yeah, Seishiro. Jig o Jigoku? He was supposed to die? What? It can't be. Seishiro Jigoku? But that's Judge Jigoku! Seishiro Jigoku. Certainly not an English name, you're right. But that can't be right. I know it's Judge Jigoku, and I saw him the day before yesterday, here in London. So I know for a fact that the man hasn't been assassinated. 
Which is why Gregson died. As I said, the Reaper failed. Oh. Gregson missed his chance to kill his mark and returned to British shores. But the Reaper wouldn't tolerate the mistake. So he killed the Inspector, personally. The Reaper, of course, being the accused Barak Van Zeeks. It's an undeniably logical argument. No, it's gotta be Strongheart! Barak did nothing wrong, but how... How does Strongheart turn into all of it? Kazuma, you planned for the trial to go this way all along, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> where did you get your wine? Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my humble chalice whilst I stand accused of murder. <laughs> this is gonna be my thumbnail. <laughs> Lord Van Ziegs. The accused has no right to speak uninvited in court. You will return to the dock. I say nothing of whether or not I'm the Reaper. That's the task of this court to decide. But there is one thing I can say unequivocally. That girl is no detective. Eh? What? Nah, that's right! I ain't! I'm an inspector! Repeating rumors heard around the yard. Reading entries from a notebook on unconfirmed origin. That's not testimony. It's practically a script. No doubt the rest of this trial will go exactly as you've clearly planned. Your hatred of me is understandable. In your mind, I'm sure I am the Reaper who sent your father to the gallows all those years ago. But you're in danger of becoming a far more sinister Reaper yourself. By attempting to have me condemned with this feeble excuse for testimony. What did you say? Mr. Narahodo, this is our chance! My lord, the defense requests that the defendant be allowed to speak. He may be privy to some important information relating to the testimony just given by the witness. He does not look happy. But well, I'll make an exception and grant the request. The defendant may remain in the witness stand for the cross-examination. Then allow me to toast the court's impartiality. Don't raise your glass in my direction, sir. Counsel for the defense, begin the cross-examination immediately. Oh no. Whoa, did my stream go down? Why? Why? What is up with my internet? What the heck? This, uh... I really need to find out what the heck is up with my internet. Spectrum, what are you doing? Ugh. At once, my lord. The Reaper's Notebook. And I wrap back to 10 years. In other words, it shows that Gregson was basically acting as the Reaper. Not you and all. That ain't the only explanation, is it? It could have been investigated the Reaper in secret and the Notebook said what you found out. If I may. When originally people began referring to me as the Reaper, I didn't object. I believed the power to intimidate London's criminal classes into compliance with the law to be beneficial. But you carried out your own investigations into the true identity of the Reaper, didn't you? Yes, and those investigations proved conclusively that Gregson was one arm of the Reaper. One arm? What are you on about? The Reaper's victims were all extremely shrewd criminals at the top of their game. There's simply no way one person could have taken them on alone. The Reaper is an organization. With you at its head. I had spies at the yard, keeping me abreast of Drexen's movements, letting me know when he was elsewhere. So I had been able to check the most ent recent entry in his book. I knew the location. You knew it said Grouse? Believing it to be a reference to the Gentleman's Club, I went there on the day in question to investigate, alone. Ah, so that explains why several members of the club claim to have seen you there. But of course the inspector was not there because at the time he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France. As shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. Very well then, back to your testimony about the contents of this notebook. Fine. Is something wrong, Mr. Nadahodo? You seemed a little shocked by something a moment ago. Oh, no, it's, it's all right. I'm overthinking this, aren't I? What are you overthinking? <laughs> 
I don't think you're overthinking anything. Names of victims, dates, places, and stuff. What in particular? Well, besides the victims' names, this other name kept cropping up. What other name was that? It's the one I told you yesterday. The same name, written over and over again. You mean... Asashin? Yeah, that's the one. She's a friend of yours or something, isn't she? Were you even listening yesterday? Asashin. The assassin. What? Like, a killer you mean? Gregson was the tactician, the one who came up with the plan of attack. He investigated the marks thoroughly, finding out when they would be vulnerable and who to use to get at them. But the person actually executing his plans was someone else, you're saying? If that's true, then the Reaper doesn't- Weeeeh! And the Reaper does indeed start to sound like an organized group of vigilantes. Ah, then perhaps what it said in the passport document. Permission for the applicant and one additional person to travel. Could that additional person have been... Clearly the, uh, clearly the assassin who was meant to take Seishiro Jikoku's life. But Asashin is dead, so who else could have been the killer? Gina, can you confirm that against the final entry that listed Grouse and Seishiro Jikoku? What name was written? Oh, well, that's the only entry that didn't have a name next to it as it happens. What? It just had like a question mark or summit there, I think. In other words, Gregson himself didn't know the identity of the assassin in that case. But, Gregson was the one making the plans, was he not? Oh, how infuriating! A nameless assassin? Uh, grass for the place. And you're saying that the mark listed was Seishiro Jigoku? That's well said. Funny name, if you ask me. And I thought your name was odd. Oh, sorry that the stream keeps going down, guys. I'm gonna have to, like, talk with my internet, because it's like, hey, you jacked up the price, and, like, connection keeps going down? What the heck is up with that? So, I'm sorry that the stream is so unstable. I don't know what it is, because, like, I'm the only person using the internet right now, so it should be totally clear. Ah. So pleased to have lost my crown there. Mr. Jigoku is the presiding judge of Japan's Supreme Court of Judicature. I remember the man. He came to our country as a visiting student 16 years ago. Studying international law and diplomacy under your tutelage, Lord Strongheart's. That bearded young fellow was a very able man, I must say. Wait, Jigoku was also learning under Strongheart, so maybe that's how he's connected to the professor case? Oh, I need to tie up my hair. It's getting too hot, but my hair is so wet that I can't really tie it tight. Uh, problems. <sighs> okay. So Lord Strongheart was Judge Shikoku's mentor. If I'm not mistaken, he returned to Japan ten years ago now. Ten years ago, after that fatal case. Precisely. In the aftermath of the professor case, his re repatriation was organized immediately. It's a mystery why such a man would be listed in an inspector's notebook. I didn't think it was possible, but the mood in here has got even worse now. Maybe I'll just keep talking. No, criminal got away ten years ago. What do you mean a criminal? Judge Jikoku is no criminal. Well, don't ask me. I know nothing about it. Oh, do you remember what father told us? That Judge Jigoku did once appear in court here in Britain. It was related to the professor case, I'm sure. Yes, of course, you're right. Seishiro was trying to mitigate Genshi's guilt, so he took the stand to testify. But he got a little carried away and um, actually managed to break the witness stand. He also said some contentious words about the British Empire for which he was charged. It was a pitiful situation, yes. I'd forgotten all about it, but I prosecuted that trial too, as it happens. Wait, so if Jigoku was took to the stand um, 10 years ago to lessen Genshin's guilt, how was he a criminal that got away? Because he didn't do anything at all then. Weird. 
You did? You're not downloading a bunch of uh, shirtless anime characters in the background, are you? No, but I have like a bajillion tabs open. Should I close them? Shoot, uh, I'll close them. Uh... Okay, let's see if that helps. <laughs> Whoopsies! That's a good thing to note if I have tabs open. It was considered to be an adjunct to the professor proceedings, you see. But he was acquitted after being told to make reparation for the damage caused to the stand. And there you have it. Have what? Surely the accused hasn't forgotten his own rule. That there's no saving anyone who faces a reaper in court, guilty or innocent alike. What? No! Are you suggesting that the reasons Judge Shigoku was targeted for assassination? The man was sent back to Japan immediately after that trial. The Reaper had no time to do his work. But then, ten years later, the Mark returns to Britain once more. Perhaps now you start to see just how vindictive the Reaper is. Come on, that's absurd! To take someone's life for that?! Isn't the whole premise of the Reaper absurd, killing those who have been found innocent? Clearly the rules by which the man operates are beyond a sane person's comprehension. But... Objection! Right, I've had just about enough of this. Gina? All this nonsense about the boss plan to kill people, it's cobblers! Come on, Odo. Yes? Why ain't you saying nothing? Why... why aren't you yelling out objection or something? What? You've got to find the flaw. You do, usually. Someone's lying here, no question. you got to work out who it is. Please, for the boss. I'm sorry, Gina. I think Gregson's guilty. <laughs> An outburst was an insult to the court and to your own testimony. I might have known that a common pickpocket from the back slums couldn't make the detective. When this trial is over, you will forfeit your warrant card, Miss Lestrade. Is that clear? Uh, uh. I've had it with the lots of you. It's lies every bleeding place you look in this world, and it. Well, I've had enough. Gina. So have I. After that little speech of Gina's, I've made up my mind. To do what, Mr. Narohono? There was one point in this cross-examination, when something was said that just didn't sit right with me. One statement that seemed odd. Oh? Do, do you mean... I'm not going to let Gina's plea for help fall on deaf ears. Come on, Otto, help. You gotta find a flaw somewhere. Mm, it was in the first thing we pressed. In other words, Gregson based on Reaper. Now you know that's the only explanation, isn't it? They've been investigating in secret, if I may. Uh, when they refer to blah blah but uh, you carried out your own investigations as a Reaper. Yes, those investigators prove he's one arm. Reaper is an organization with you at its head. I had spies at the yard. I've been able to check the most recent entry. I knew the location. You knew it said Grouse. Believing it to be Gentleman's Club, he went there alone. That's why people saw him there, but Gregson was not there, because at the time he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France. As shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. How did he know that Gregson's trunk was metal? Fine. Something wrong. Oh no, it's alright. I'm overthinking this. Uh, I'm going to present the trunk. Nope, that was wrong. When do I present it? Checking the waku. Where are you? Um, passport. Present the passport. Da -da 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 -da. 
Uh, press every statement. Uh, simply press. What? I think I see better last lines, but again, just simply press all of these and we'll get a question to the answer. What? Okay, so. Okay, um. Okay, I just gotta press here, I think. I wanna thank you, Gina. You helped me find my resolve. Eh? What do you mean? Amongst everything we've heard during this Crocs examination, there's one thing that defies explanation, one inconsistency. What? An inconsistency? Really, Ada? I don't quite know what it means yet, but... Yes, there's an inconsistency in something that was said by... Asogi... Kazuma. Because he said Gregson's metal trunk. By you, Kazuma Asogi. Me? Is this some attempt at filibustering council? Prosecutor Asogi has given no testimony. What are you suggesting I said that was inconsistent? You let something slip that you shouldn't have. When I present the relevant piece of evidence, I imagine you'll realize what you've done. Very well then, counsel. Go ahead. What evidence reveals this alleged inconsistency in something the prosecutor Asogi has said? This is a trunk that belonged to Inspector Gregson. A metal construction, is it? It's certainly very heavy. What's this? A blood stain, and a relatively fresh one, too. What? You? I mean, that ain't grease from all the boss's fish and chips. Fresh blood on the inspector's trunk. That suggests that the victim was traveling with that luggage when he was killed. That can't be. There was no mention of any trunk in Scotland Yard's report. Yes, there's a reason for that. Immediately after the inspector's body was discovered, one of the street peddlers made off with the trunk, hoping to sell it. But I found it. Me, with those... Me, with nose for trouble. Hmm. Which means that nobody should have known anything about the trunk. Unless, of course, we're talking about somebody who was present when the victim was killed. And yet, during the cross-examination of the witness just now, you said this, Kazuma. Because at the time he was making way to the door to France, I showed him the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. So the question is, how did you know about the inspector's trunk? We know the man went on a trip to France. Where else would he have put his passport? But you knew it was a metal trunk. Answer me honestly, Kazuma. On 31st October, where exactly were you? At the port of Dunkirk on board the SS Grouse. Is that the answer you're looking for, Yunosuke? Kazuma, what did you... Did Kazuma try to... I hadn't considered the possibility before, but... If Kazuma was there on the ship, then it can only have been for one purpose. Oh no, Mr. Naruhodo. Surely... Surely you don't think... Ha 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 ha. Come on, Junosuke. You know the rules. The only thing that really talks in the courtroom is hard evidence. As I understand it, Inspector Gregson always took that case with him when he traveled. So as it stands, you've proved nothing. Kazuma. Are you challenging me to prove it beyond all reasonable doubt? That you were there that day in the same place as the inspector? He was there with Gregson. There's a clue that you've overlooked. A secret that Trunk can tell us. I can't be sure at this point. I'll need to verify it. But I have a nasty feeling that I'm going to be right. The accusation being made is deeply disturbing, but nevertheless, we must test it. The defense will identify the court where in the trunk this alleged clue is to be found. It's... where's the evidence? I mean, it's that... it's that... metal... This is your proof. What do you say to that, Prof Prosecutor Asugi? Personally, I think tying the defense counsel to the inspector's trunk and tossing it into the sea would be more helpful. What? At least that way, London's courtrooms will be safe from his destructive accusation. Wait. I believe that was a rather- Wait, I'm wrong? No, the- Let us see if you sink or swim under- 
Did I not select the metal shard? What? Do I have to open it? Let's have a look inside. Oh my gosh, I had to open it. That was so dumb. So dumb. You can see the metal piece on the outside. There's a small piece of metal lodged in the wall of the trunk here, like the tip of a blade. Eh? A blade? Kazuma, slung around your waist as ever today, is the esteemed black blade Kaduma. Of course it is. Won't you draw it, here in this courtroom, for all to see? Exercise caution, my learned friend. That man is the son of London's most notorious killer. Bailiff, watch Prosecutor Asogi like a hawk. That won't be necessary. <gasps> it's broken! No, Kazuma, you tried to kill Gregson! Or you did kill Gregson! <gasps> oh no, Kazuma killed Gregson. Oh no. The tip is broken. That's what she said. If the fragment of metal from the trunk fits together with the end of the sword, the question of who was there with Inspector Gregson will be answered. Agreed, Kazuma Asagi? No, but just because he sliced at the metal trunk doesn't mean he killed Gregson. He could have been trying to stop Gregson. Expertly done, Ryunosuke. That's a point to you, and well deserved. Do you mean to tell the court, Prosecutor Asagi? Yes, on 31st October, I accompanied Inspector Gregson to Dunkirk. In order to carry out a mission. No, he was the assassin! Strongheart told him to kill Jigoku! That's why Gregson didn't know who the assassin was, because he's like, I don't know this, this person. Oh my gosh. So the additional person authorized to travel... ...was me. And the mission was... The assassination of the mark. What? What? You mean, you're the killer whose name was omitted from this notebook? You were following the Reaper's orders to dispatch Judge Jigoku? Let me make one thing perfectly clear. I have killed no one. Okay, so he was trying to stop Gregson. Gregson must have gotten hurt by someone else? Or... Someone else on the boat killed him. Explain. I accepted the assassination mission, yes, and I accompanied Gregson to Dunkirk, but I never had any intention of carrying out the plan. You were never going to do it? We can believe Kazuma-sama, I'm sure. After all, Judge Ijikoku arrived safely in London the following day. Hmm. On the 31st, I boarded a train from London with Inspector Gregson. We traveled to Dover, from where we crossed the channel to Dunkirk. Then we boarded the SS Grouse and made for the cabin deck, as indicated, in, as indicated in the plan. You went to Judge Shikoku's cabin? Exactly. He wasn't there, though. We decided to wait, but... But you've already told us that you had no intention of going through with it anyway. I didn't come to Great Britain to take anyone's life, so I left Gregson and dis disembarked the ship. I spent that night at a boarding house in the town, and returned to England the following morning. A boarding house in Dunkirk? My signature will be in the register book. It would be simply simple enough to verify. Then, what became of Jigoku? Gregson was no assassin, so the mark was spared. I'm sure it's easy enough to imagine what happened after that. What would you rather do, spend five seconds with that boss from the one with his tongue hanging out? Making noises or finding out Kazuma is evil. Uh, I don't think, but Kazuma isn't evil. So that can't happen. <laughs> Gregson returned to England as well, having failed to complete the mission. He met with the Reaper in that room on Fresno Street to report a failure. Causing the infuriated mastermind to pull the trigger and end his wretched agent's life.
That's the real truth behind Inspector Gregson's murder. But if you did nothing as you claim, how did the tip of your sword come to be lodged in the inspector's trunk? I don't need to answer that. The victim was killed by a gunshot. A small fragment of a Japanese blade isn't relevant to the case. And accordingly, I choose to exercise my right to silence on that matter. I mean, that is true. He was killed by gunshot. Be that as it may, the court will sequester the sword as evidence. As you wish, my lord. So they're gonna give us the sword, but not Gregson's notebook as evidence? What the? We must take immediate action now. No, I inspect the sword now. Examine. Karuma, the great blade. If it's such a thing of beauty, I want to gaze on it for hours. The tip of the great sword, broken. It's such a shame. It's been so meticulously cared for over the years. I can almost hear Karuma sobs. Kazuma must have really taken a swing for that to happen. Is there nothing else I can look at? Like, is there anything in the... Ooh. I guess not. Okay. See, there's no, like, blood on the tip, so... Eh. Small pants has assumed missing. To verify whether Seishiro Jigoku remains unharmed. What? Remains unharmed? I agree. That should be our first priority. It's recently come to my attention that he hasn't been sin seen since yesterday. How did you... When a foreign dignitary invited to Great Britain goes missing for 24 hours. It's only natural that the question of his safety should arise. You don't mean to say that you think Judge Chikoku may have been killed. The Reaper has more than one assassin at his disposal. And he has the power to and influence to give orders from the inside of a prison cell. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? Where did you get another? <laughs> if I were truly the Reaper, I'd be able to tell you. Order in the court. Order! We will take an emergency recess for 30 minutes. Now? Guests of the symposium have been told to maintain regular contact with the organizer's office. If the man can't be located within half an hour, we would have to assume the worst. Oh no! Not Judge Jikoku! No one would want to kill a harmless Japanese man who'd only just arrived in the country. Except, that is... For the Reaper, wanting to finish off a mark that slipped through the net ten years ago. I would have to agree. Mr. Nadahodo, for the defense's sake. My lord? I sincerely hope we are successful. If we are unable to confirm Mr. Jikoku's healthy existence in the next 30 minutes, you'll face grave difficulties. Ah. Court is adjourned for 30 minutes. What? What? Sir, what? Why would the Reaper go after him? He just tried to defend the professor. Because I don't think the Reaper is Van Zeke, so why would they go after him? Kasuma-sama, the Reaper's assassin. I feel as though I'm in a nightmare. I can hardly believe it either, but on the other hand, Kazuma isn't in the habit of making up stories. I have such a terrible sense of foreboding. If something awful has happened to Judge Shigoku, then I feel as though things will only spiral further and further out of control. I felt it from the moment I stepped into the courthouse this morning. That strange sensation that we were careering- Careering? Isn't it careening? Towards a foregone conclusion. Well, in worst case, we might only have 30 minutes left. Unfortunately, though, I don't think there's anything we can do but wait now. We're out of options. Actually, there may be one last hand we can play. Or rather, one last year. Of course. The little Mr. Sholmes doll that Iris gave us. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, just pull those little holy ears as hard as you possibly can. Perhaps now is the time. What should I do? Pull Harley's ears or not? Unless they think the judge knows something, maybe he was part of the escape? Oh. 
You're right. Maybe he was part of the escape. Maybe he was the one that bribed the prison guards to be like, yo, let him out. Um, but then Drebber saw him. Drebber saw Genshin come out. But even if Jigoku was like, oh shoot, Drebber saw Genshin, I feel like Jigoku wouldn't kill Genshin because they're friends. Mm, pull it. Here goes then. I'm going to do it. Good luck, Mr. Narahodo. No looking back. Heave! Ow! That scream sounded like Mr. Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, where are you? Here, my dear fellow, here. It's... it's the felt doll talking. Pull the ears again, Mr. Narahodo. As hard as you can. All right, then. I'll put all my strength into it. Heave! Ow! Please, my dear fellows, you don't need to pull my ear off. Mr. Sholmes, where are you? Myself and my trusty partner are presently in the first class cabin area of the SS Grouse. The SS Grouse? She left Dover last night after the final pieces of cargo were loaded. They're currently docked at Dunkirk, but due to be underway again in half an hour. You've taken a ship to France? Please, even with my athletic prowess, I would struggle to jump the Straits of Dover. After we left Baker Street last night, we hurried by camp to the station by a train to the port. In order to board this vessel in time. So, you mean you'd already worked it out? That the steamship was where everything really took place? Mr. Nanohodo, pray, what is my name? Herlock Sholmes, world famous great detective. Recited to perfection. Well done. You're a genius, Mr. Sholmes. That's the only word for it. <gasps> oh, that's so cute. It actually pulls his ear. Miss Susato, gently with this genius's ear, please. Oh my, I'm ever so sorry. If I marry Sholmes. Oh, is it her dad? Ah, there you are, Mikotoba. You may remember that it was in fact I who made the connection to the SS Grouse. At Scotland Yard yesterday, when we examined that notebook, I recalled my steamship ticket. Ah, ha, ha, ha. But of course it was, my dear fellow. And not once did I controvert that fact. I merely had a court-bound companions utter my name. Yes, you did, didn't you? We've just entered a recess. The trial resumes in 30 minutes from now. And if we're unable to present any new leads, then I'm afraid to say... Do not fret, please. It's precisely for that purpose that my partner and I have made this journey. I have no doubt we shall have welcome news for you within half the hour. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. That would be wonderful. Until later, then. Yes, you'll be hearing from us if you do not- if you're not in touch first. Ow, 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 ow! I shan't be hearing anything if you keep tucking my ear in that mindless fashion. Whatever was the idea behind making a receiver operated in that way in the first place, Sholmes? Why the deuce would I know? It's Iris's invention, not mine. Man, that's a really good invention if, like, it reacts that far away. And the gadget with radio continues, at least he's not an assassin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whilst I know how much you enjoy being the hero of the hour, Sholmes, we have but half- we have but half that now before the Kraus puts this to sea again. If we don't conclude our investigations rapidly, we shall find ourselves in Naples before long. Hmm, there are times, Mikotoba, when you make a surprising amount of sense. So, let us begin. We're investigating now? First class cabin number two. Yes, this is the one. But I don't believe an investigation of the cabin is going to be plain sailing. That crewman standing in front of the door is an angry looking fellow. Why are you loitering here? Who are you? My dear fellow, do you not recognize a world famous great detective when you see one? The question really ought to be, who are you? Do you not recognize world traveling great sailor chicken... <laughs> chicken stroganoff! When you see... Why does he have shoals written on his arm? Great detective? Ha! I don't think so. And his uh, sailor's not are two fish? Do you see that, Mikotoba? It would appear that this man is a devoted follower of mine. 
<laughs> no, it's a number. Five, two, three, one, zero, four, five. Goodness me, is that a tattoo? That's a shoals? I must say, while such adoration is flattering, naturally, it does leave me a little cold. What are you talking about? Leave now! How distressing. My loyal devotee knows me, me only by name and not by appearance. And yet, I already know a great deal about you, sir. You have a brother, I believe. Like yourself, he's a shipman. Currently traveling the world aboard a Rus Russian stream Russian steamship, in fact. How could you know this? Elementary, my dear Mikatobo. I'm sure it was. Three days ago, I was banned for London aboard the ship, you see. We're looking for one of my fellow passengers, a man by the name of Jigoku. There is no one with this name on board, but we know that he purchased a ticket for passage. Ah, you mean Easter- oh, someone else read that, whoopsies. Ah, you mean Eastern man, he left ship two hours ago. Here at Dunkirk, he said something about emergency, I think. What? Are you sure? So Shishiro's realized that we're after him, has he? This common is the one behind you. We should like to investigate, please. No, I have orders to not leave and let Mouse inside. Mikotoba, be a good man and draw the sailor's attention away, would you? Make up some excuse so that he leaves the area. Doesn't great detective see that even sailors have ears, both left and right. Curses, the plan is ruined! You've only yourself to blame, my friend, Holmes. Forget it, cabin door is locked. Even if I am not here, you cannot get inside. Mikotoba, I'm sure you haven't forgotten my special talent, have you? Opening any lock? Within a mere five seconds. So if you'd be so kind as to afford me the requisite time, old friend, in your typically accommodating manner. How could I refuse such a typically unappealing request, old friend? So I need to distract that burly sailor for five seconds, do I? Good man. So, the game is afoot. This is interesting, because I'm doing an investigation smack dab in the middle of a trial. Ah, the switch for the electrical lights. Perhaps if I turned the light off the lights, the crewman wouldn't be able to see what we're doing. Flick the switch! Ah, what is happening? Where is light? Now, Sholmes, now! The thump. Click. Hmm, nobody there. That was a close shave. Quite a knack you have, stumbling so violently in an apparently empty corridor. Do be quiet, Sholmes. I shall have to think of another approach. Uh, then the mouse trap. This must be a mouse trap, I think. Perhaps I could distract the crewman's attention with this somehow. Try it! Yeah. Choo choo! That sounds like a big mouse and trap. Choo choo! I will bring bucket of water later and put out of misery. I don't like the sign of that. In any case, my dear fellow, that was quite unconvincing. Only Japanese mice make a chew sound. Oh, really, Sholmes? And pray tell, what do Russian mice make? Naturally, they were also quite unconvincing. I readily admit. So go ahead, Mikotobe, do a PP this time. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm sure I can come up with an alternative solution. Uh... After speaking to for members of the crew to communicate with one another around the ship, if I could just persuade our stocky sailor friend that he needed to use it, Sholmes could unlock the door whilst he was distracted. The question is how. Oops, nope, no, no, nothing I'm not gonna do over here. That's the way back to the deck, but we certainly can't give up on this now. Uh, the fire alarm! <laughs> this would appear to be an alarm bell. All hell would break loose if that thing were to ring. The whole crew would know about it. Set it off! Doesn't he meet port starboard? Uh, I don't know ship terms. Here it goes then. Pardon me in advance. Ling a 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 ling. You, what are you doing? If we were that seat, that would be a very bad problem. What's going on down there? Seaman struck off. Report at once. Sorry, sir. Nothing to report. It was just stupid trick. 
No, not by me, by world famous... No, as I told you. Now, Sholmes, now! Done. Not even five seconds, eh? Don't stand there gopping at my brilliance, Mikotobe. In we go! Oh, yes. Ding a ling 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 a Do, 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 do. Why would Jigoku want to be running away from us? What is he hiding? Good gracious. It would appear that the occupant of this cavern did indeed disembark rather hurriedly. Those clothes on the floor there, they're satiados without question. Well, it seems we were just a little too late. Yes, by about two hours. Still, whilst we're here, we should investigate thoroughly. There may well be two hours worth of clues to find in here. But that burly crewman may return at any moment, Sholmes. Indeed he may. Which makes this all the more thrilling. Well, first we're going to examine this. <laughs> There's a speaking tube here, look, though it's been stoppered with some cloth. So the voices of the crewmen on the bridge aren't an annoyance, I suppose. Or well, indeed, so that the voices in this cabin aren't heard elsewhere. Could something have happened in here that was for no one else's ears, do you think? Either that, or... It could be to prevent snakes from entering. <laughs> That's really become a favorite case of yours, hasn't it? Is there anything in the closet? According to the report I was given, Naruhoto was concealing himself in Asugi's wardrobe. Indeed he was, and it was of a similar size to this one. Ah, you must climb inside yourself, my dear fellow. What? Whatever for? It was, that, it was the site of my first fateful meeting with Mr. Nadahodo. You can experience the moment for yourself now, complete with my dramatic rhetoric. Come along now, in you go, this will only take a moment. Really, Sholmes, surely you can just tell me what you said? Well, I uttered some brilliant remark and opened the wardrobe to reveal the stowaway murderer. I think I'll just read about it in the Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Okay, um, this glass. Quite the exquisite glass, I must say. See here how it's... Is something wrong, Sholmes? You suddenly trailed off. Ice, Mikotoba, ice! What opulence the first class passengers enjoyed. Chilled drinks. Pardon? Could it be that the steamship is equipped with an electrically refrigerated cold room? <gasps> Oh my gosh! That's how he kept the body fresh! Because they have an ice maker! It was Jigoku! Jigoku killed Gregson! No! Or Strongheart! Jigoku or Strongheart killed Greg- What? What? What role does- Ooh, sorry, I hit my mic. What role does Jigoku play in the professor- Ah! Could it be that the steamship is equipped with an electrified- Refrigerated cold room, do you think? Well, it is a luxury liner after all. They have enormous refrigerators for storing all sorts of lavish produce as well as ice. On our voyage from Japan, we enjoyed culinary delights from all over the world. Hmm, suddenly, Mikotoba. The sight of you is making my mouth water. I haven't taken on the flavor of the food I ate, you know. This is the waste pa paper basket, look. And there's still rubbish inside. Indeed, then let us pry. I've discovered recently I have a penchant for exploring the contents of others' waste paper baskets. I sincerely hope only for your work. Ah. Here we have a notice issued to passengers from three days ago. Three days ago? The night before we arrived in London then. When I was still aboard myself. Evacuation drill noticed. Following departure from the port of Dunkirk, all crew members are- I didn't finish reading that! Ah yes, there was an evacuation drill, I remember now. For our safety and security, all first-class passengers were constantly under the watchful eye of the crew, so it was a welcome relief to have some privacy for once. The evacuation drill itinerary. Thank you! Um... Shoot, I can't even examine the evidence right now. A butter toast? Mmm, butter. Delicious. These are rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Additionally, there are severe punishments for stowing away in wardrobes and or travel cases. I feel the rules have increased since I last read them. Probably just my imagination. What about the fact that they're not straight on the wall? Doesn't that strike you? 
Hmm, you may be right. Probably just your imagination, though. A trifle. And you know what I always say, Mikotobo. There is nothing more important... There is nothing important about trifles. It's probably just my imagination, but I think that might be slightly off. Um... Well, obviously we gotta examine the trunk. That's a very sizable trunk indeed. Seishiro is partial to all things large. That's a Shizu! And a rather clumsy fellow, if he failed to notice, he'd left that behind. Perhaps he left it on purpose. It's lighter than you might think, but still a hindrance to a speedy escape. Hmm, pity. It's locked, so we can't look inside. Surely five seconds from now the situation will be quite different, though? Sadly not. It's a seven-digit combination lock. And I'm not in a morose enough mood to work through all the combinations at present. There's no way we can find out what the combination is. I know it! Five, 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 two, three, one, zero, four, five. I know it, I know it. Let me open the trunk. What you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk inside that trunk. I'm gonna prove that Jigoku killed Gregson. <laughs> Plenty of reading material to keep passengers occupied on the long sea voyages. I found the mixture of classic literature and easy reading uh, to be most satisfactory, I must say. Whoever stocked this bookcase was a hopeless heretic. There's no copy of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, my dear fellows. Um, I'm afraid it's just me, but no, you're quite right. More blasphemous than overlooking the Bible. I shall leave a copy behind. I just happen to have one with me. You're a true missionary of the Church of Great Detectives, aren't you? How can I open the trunk? I know the combo. The wall is a slightly different color just here. Do you see? The thing was moved from the from right to left. What are they covering up on the left? Let's find out. Indeed, what you have observed arises when a frame that has been hanging for some time is removed. Perhaps your friend is an art thief. Now there's a bold deduction worthy of a great detective, I'm sure. It may very well be the elusive thief who has been plaguing France's galleries of late. I think perhaps we should focus our attentions elsewhere, Sholmes, don't you? That outline on the wall. I feel as though I might have spotted something of a similar shape and size elsewhere. You don't say! You! You are still here! Ah, oh, Abel Seaman Stroganoff. Hello again. Hello again. That was Mikotoba. Whoops. I was beginning to think that you never materialize. Eh? You... You are waiting for me. Of course. I was expecting you to burst in with a hearty Russian profanity far sooner. I was in trouble with Captain because of trick you played before. Poor innocent chicken. It's all your fault. Ship is leaving port soon. Get off, now! Of course, we shall disembark presently, my dear fellow. But first, there is something that must be done. What are you talking about? Why naturally? The debunking of your deceit and the bearing of the truth. Kakoi? I hope that's how you pronounce it. Emoji, hungry and thirsty toast. I I am super thirsty. My throat is so dry. I'm afraid I see through your lies. For one thing, Mr. Chikoku has not yet left this vessel at all. Ah! And for another, my dear Seaman Stroganoff. You know exactly what a man is even as we speak, don't you? How how can you... Good gracious, Storms. You mean you've worked it out? All of it? It's really been too long, hasn't it, old friend? Ten years, no less. So, would you care to join me for a dance of my inimitable logic and reasoning? Yes! Nothing would please me more! What is this? We have but nine... We have, we have but minutes until the vessel puts to sea. No games now. I don't know why I said nine. Oh, my elbow hurts. Time is of the essence. I like it. I like your midriff showing, Mr. Stroganoff. Mr. Stroganoff, allow me to remind you of your earlier claim. You told us that Jigoku left the ship some two hours ago. Ah, that is what I said. Sadly, that was a rather clumsy lie. You see, there is something in this room that quite clearly contradicts it. What? Ah, yes, of course. I see you've noted it too, Mikotoba. Then please do take the lead. 
light in this cabin shows the impossibility of Jikoku having disembarked two hours ago. Let's see what the last three years have done to your observational skills then, Mikotobe. It's been ten years since we last did the Shorms, not three. Well, of course it has, quite. Now, all the clues are here in this cabin for your eyes to see. But as I always say, you must not merely look, but observe. Observe and the answers become clear. So, impress me. I think I can manage that. Wouldn't it be... the ice? Because the ice didn't fully melt. Maybe lower the drink button by a smidge? <laughs> Did he just tap it? Maybe... I will change the drink... Um, reward. <laughs> Perhaps you should have a clear... cleared away that glass. How curious that the ice shouldn't have melted despite it being abandoned two hours ago. Ah! It would appear that the man he was here in this very cabin until moments before our arrival. With this well-chilled glass in hand. Get your mind off the refreshment storms. One might even conclude that somebody informed him of our boarding. What did you agree, Mr. Stroganoff? Uh. But why would Seishiro run from us? Before we consider that question, allow me to confirm one small matter. Would I be correct in saying that these first-class cabins of the SS Grouse are the same ones in which you and Mr. Jikoku were accommodated on your voyage from Japan? Ah, that's right, they are. I was in the cabin next door, and Seishiro was... yes. Fifty days in this cab... very cabin during our voyage. As I suspected, for you see... There are traces in this cabin of a dark secret that Mr. Jikoku had to hide. What traces? I know nothing about this! Ah, this is news to you, is it, Mr. Stroganoff? Sholmes, what exactly are you getting at? As I said, there are traces in this cabin of some nefarious activity. Something that appears out of place, which I'm quite sure you wouldn't have escaped your notice. Something out of place in here? That's the key to this, Mikotoba. The remnants of the dark deed that took place in here are being masked by something quite incongruous. I must say, I didn't foresee ever doing this dance of deduction with you again, Mikotoba. No, quite. But life is full of unexpected twists and turns, as you well, as we well know. Now then, let's see if I can't uncover the truth here. Yes, you have to floor, my dear fellow. It's... The rules of passage. It moved. It's the rules of passage in this frame here. They're obviously out of place. The way they're hanging crooked on the wall, as if they were put in their hair. Yes, as I'm sure you've already concluded. The frame was originally over here. The shape and size are a perfect match. Yeah, you are right. When did frame move? Hardly the most observant of crewmen are you, Mr. Stroganoff. I would think your captain is quite justified in having his reservations about your reliability. Grrr. Oh dear, that really seemed to touch a nerve. So, Mikotoba, why don't you lift that frame off the wall? A gunshot! Jigo kill kill Gregson, but why did he do that? That looks like a bullet hole. What? Who has been shooting walls? I see, the projectile has been removed. Clearly the careful occupant of this room has already disposed of it. Now then, Mr. Stroganoff. Ah! I have the distinct impression that you're attempting to shield said occupants. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would I try to protect Eastern Stranger? Ah, so we're talking about the same man, I see. Good. Ugh. I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this in no time, aren't you? Because there is some very noteworthy evidence that explains the reason why you're lying for the man. Yes, you've been told to keep us... Uh, keep up this pretense. I didn't read that, sorry. I really don't know how to approach this one, Sholmes. Ah, my dear Mikotoba, simply keep first principles in mind. Study your subject from every angle. And I'm quite sure that you'll see it. In fact, I'd put a wager on it. So I'm to glare at the fellow from all sides? Well, I can certainly do that. As clearly shown by... I mean... Isn't it? Tattoo? <laughs> nope! So that really is the combination to the safe. Mikotoba, no games now were my words, were they not? Hmm, come on. 
Come, Scholes, where's the fun in life without a little fooling around, hmm? Ha 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 ha, quite right you are. That was a close shave. I better rethink that before I'm the fool here. Uh, clearly shown by... So a Russian crewman is aiding a Japanese man to evade capture by an English detective. Nationality needn't come into it. In disrespect, at least, all humans are the same. Ask yourself, what can spur a man to do the bidding of another about whom he knows precious little? There's only one thing in the world with such repugnant bottomless power. Let's not get carried away now, Sholmes. Ah, it's money! Where are you hiding the bills? Ah, no! Change my angle! Ah, oh, wait, it was there, it was there. Water of banknotes. Yeah! It's almost too obvious for words. Right, the universal language of the world. Money. Ah! And I'd wager, uh... And I'd wager that the Eastern fellow in question is Seishiro Jigoku, yes? Ah! So, I presume you realize what this means. There are clear signs that a crime has been committed in this cabin. In the way you're going, sir, you'll find yourself accused of being an accomplice. What? I believe you know, Mr. Stroganoff. You know where Mr. Jigoku is hiding at this precise moment in time. As always, Mikotoba, in matters of deduction, the furtive glance is your unfaltering ally. Yes, I think you're onto something there, Sholmes. You found the chink in this burly fellow's armor. We need only follow the man's gaze to know where our prey is hiding. The slightest flicker of the pupils, a minutely delayed blink. Nothing escapes my attention, even that which is barely perceptible. You could hardly call this barely perceptible, Sholmes. The man's turned his entire head. It's not exactly what you describe as a furtive glance, is it? It's almost too obvious. You should let your tapping toes decide, my dear fellow. It's in the trunk! That's why he threw all his clothes out so he could fit inside. You turned immediately to look at this large trunk, didn't you? Ah! The truth is, Seishiro Jigoku was unable to escape from the ship in time, and is, at this very moment, doing his best to stifle his breath inside this trunk. If he still has a breath to take, I fear he may be running dangerously low on air. Hmm? I imagine he didn't count on us making a nuisance of ourselves for quite so long. I think it would be in everyone's best interest for us to open the trunk as quickly as possible. But how can we? Are you forgetting about the combination lock? We don't know the seven digit code. The combination lock can't be opened from inside the trunk. Therefore, there must have been an arrangement for somebody to open it after our departure. Of course. In short, before Jigoku hid himself in that truck, he must have told somebody the seven digit number for the lock. As I'm sure you can confirm, Mr. Stroganoff. Oh. No! I know nothing about combination code. What's with these people and tight spaces? I tried to think of a of a pervy joke, but it didn't come to my head in time. <laughs> Don't move a muscle, my good seaman. Ah. Now, Mikotoba, would you do the honors and open the trunk? How on earth do you expect me? It's a seven-digit number, remember? Quickly now, we have little time. <laughs> no. Uh. Oops. Five. Two. Three. One zero. Four, five. S H O L M M E A. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Five, five, two, three, one, zero, four, five. That did it. It's open. You had to meddle, didn't you? Are you going to kill me, too? Well, Eugene, you found me now. Seishiro. I was really hoping beyond hope not to find you here, you know. 
But you're not entirely unsurprised, I take it. No, not quite. No, quite. I just wish it were some other way. Well, are you ever going to introduce me? Ah, your reputation precedes you, Mr. Sholmes. I read stories of many of your exploits. Excuse my manner, Sholmes. This is Mr. Jikoku, my old friend and traveling companion. The devil is in the details, Mikotoba. I believe you meant to say your old friend and traveling companion. We made the cowardly decision to flee the country without a word to anyone when things turned sour. I see my reputation precedes me as well. What an honor. Well, Seishiro, are you going to explain all this? You know it all by now, I imagine. What you didn't know, of course, is that three days ago, on the night before our arrival in Britain, an attempt was made on my life here on this very ship. By the Reaper of the Bailey? Yes, I've since heard. Because you were once prosecuted by the Reaper, weren't you? Ten years ago now, mind you. And I had no idea at the time what dangerous individual he was. Anyway, when we arrived in London to find the symposium was postponed until goodness knows when. It became all too apparent to me that I might very well be targeted again. So you decided to flee the capital without saying a word to me about it. I'm afraid so, yes. Of course, I realize now. And I really ought to have confided in you. It's somewhat surprising, I must say. What is? Well, first class cabins aboard luxury steamships are on very short supply. It's more than a little hard to believe that this one just happened to be available. So says the protagonist of some colorful short stories. Well, I don't care for your opinion. cabin did just happen to be available, so I purchased a ticket and here I am. I've just seen for myself the obvious remnants of that incident in this cabin. So you'd already purchased a return ticket before we have even docked in Dover, had you? To prevent anyone else taking this cabin and seeing the evidence, is that it? Eugene, I have nothing to say to you. Well, in a mere five minutes, this ship will set off on its onward voyage and not make port again until Italy. I'm afraid we must insist that you and disembark with us at once. You have no jurisdiction over my movements. We have this, Seishiro. Take it. What is it? It's a subpoena from the Old Bailey. You're a man of the law. You know what the ramifications of ignoring a document like this from the British courts would be. You came prepared then, Eugen. Oh, his face looks scary! Come on, let's go. One moment. What is it, Sholmes? Inside Mr. Jikoku's trunk. I found this rather fascinating trinket. What is that? Seishiro? Can't help you, I'm afraid. Some small component from something. A gun! But what? I have no idea. By the look on his face, I think he genuinely doesn't know. Well, let us pocket it as a small souvenir of our brief sojourn in France. Small component has been entered into court record. Well, young Naruhodo, I think we've done as much as we can, I'm afraid. The rest will be on the shoulders of you and your assistant. Oh my gosh, there's more! Kazuma Asogi. Let me review the evidence. You see these little things all over the place, don't you? It's the part on the top of a pocket watch that you use to twist to set the time, isn't it? Oh my gosh, it's part of Grex's pocket watch! It's called the crown, I believe. A watch would be quite useless without one. The crown? Like what sits on top of a monarch's head? That's a very grand name for such a tiny part. But actually... Yes, Mr. Naruhodo? If this is a crown... I have a feeling I might have seen a monarch around here somewhere with that very bare head. If I monarch you mean pocket watch, then I'm quite sure you have. Okay. So we solved it. It's part of Gregson's pocket watch. Uh, examine. Um, all crew members are required to assemble on the main deck at 10pm. In order to review evacuation procedures, the drill will take 20 minutes. Crew to resume duties as soon as drill is over. So that's when Gregson died. He died at... 10 p.m. Which is why... Which is why... The clock still worked, and then the next day at 5, when he was shot to death, the clock was at 5. 
because that's when it would have stopped. Q. Can I examine his pocket watch again? What do you think, Mr. Sato? I think I know what will fit here. We'll see if that little round component was actually part of Inspector Grex's broken pocket watch. Really? I was just thinking precisely that too. A perfect fit! I knew it! Alright, perhaps you knew it. I'll make note of this. Blah, 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 blah. It's now clear as part of the missing crown of Inspector Gregson's pocket watch. And it was in Judge Shikoku's trunk. Oh, cool, 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 cool. And we still don't have Gregson's notebook as part of our evidence. I know you, and I know you wouldn't lie, but still, there's no doubt that you're holding something back. You know more than you're saying. During the past 30 minutes, while this court was adjourned, all possible efforts were expended. But sadly, Mr. Jikoku's whereabouts could not be ascertained. Oh yeah, I found the evidence in in France. How the heck do I have the evidence in England right now? That's crazy. The engineer and this guy are crazy. Sherlock Holmes in the second century. <laughs> we must accept the unfortunate conclusion that the Reaper has already done the deed. He's alive! There's no sense in wasting any more of the court's time. The prosecution calls for an immediate verdict. No, the trial cannot end now. You're Japanese, man, you Yunosuke. You should know when to lay down your sword. And you should know never to presume when the battle is won. The court has already seen- has already been presented with all the evidence and heard all relevant testimony. And there can only be one conclusion, that the accused is guilty. All relevant testimony? Far from it. There's still a crucial witness from whom the court is yet to hear a single word of testimony. In that case, call your witness to the stand at once, counsel. Yes, my lord. Tomorrow, if possible. The witness is already on his way and scheduled to arrive tomorrow. Who on earth is this crucial witness? Seishiro Jigoku. The very man allegedly murdered by the Reaper. Judge Jigoku, you found him? Oh, Kazuma, you look so handsome. Even when you're angry. But the investigations of every policing resource in the capital suggest that Jigoku is already dead. How in the name of gods did you find the man? He was located in France during the recess, at the port of Dunkirk. Thanks to one of Mr. Herlock Sholmes' famous deductions. Herlock Sholmes? Inspector Gregson almost certainly met with Mr. Jigoku on the night of his death, because along with Prosecutor Asogi, Gregson was on a mission to assassinate the man. Which means that Seishiro Jigoku is the sole witness who can clarify exactly what happened aboard the SS Grouse on the 31st October. Well, it would appear that it's too soon to move to adjudication at this point. The prosecution concurs. The court must hear Mr. Jigoku's testimony. No judgment should be passed until all testimony has been considered. In that case, I hereby call the end of today's proceedings. Court will reconvene at the same hour tomorrow. No objections from either side. No, my lord. No objections, my lord. We live to fight another day, by the skin of our teeth. Okay, so... To be continued, okay. So then... Second part of this case is going to be Jigoku's trial. So I'm guessing there's gonna be like three parts to this case, unless it's gonna be like Ace Attorney 3's crazy ending. Investigation part one? It's not even another trial yet. It's inv oh gosh. So it's gonna be investigation. And it's part one, which means there's gonna be a part two. There's probably gonna be so trial, investigation, trial, investigation. Trial. Oh gosh. Oh gee. Uh, fun times. Uh. Okay, well.
that's gonna be it for me tonight. I guess this was a shorter um, section compared to others because it's only been about two hours, even with me doing extra talking. So hopefully the other sections will also be just as short. Uh, by the way, I beat Monster Hunter Iceborne DLC main story now. I'm, I'm in game ending stuff. Wow, good job! Congrats, dude! I still have to beat Fire Emblem Three Houses. I started, um, pick, I picked up the Black Eagles route again. But right now I'm grinding everyone's supports and I'm just like, I don't really care about Black Eagles. So I don't really want to, like... I used to want to unlock every single character support conversations with everyone, but now I'm just like, I'm tired. I just want to finish the game. I should just hurry up and finish it. But I also want to finish Baba Is You because I started playing that and I'm just like, how do, how do you combine words? Uh, but yeah, I'll see if I continue streaming this tomorrow. I kind of want to stream tomorrow. It'll either be an art stream or continuation of this stream. I wanted to finish before Monster Hunter Rise. Didn't Rise already come out? Or am I thinking wrong? Uh, anyways, it's getting late and I'm getting tired. So I will call this a night. Yeah? Okay, yeah, it already did come out. Yeah. Alright, so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Bye-bye!